Okay, so hi. Hi, how are you? <laughs> All right, how are you? I'm very well, thanks. You're looking pretty good for a, a feathered friend with clipped wings. Well, thank you. It's all in the lighting. <laughs> uh, as you can see, I surround myself with pandemonium and then nobody knows what's happening on me personally. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting approach. <laughs> I like it. There's a fair bit of, uh, of pandemonium here as well. But... Oh, I think that's kind of the name of the game, isn't it? Right now. <laughs> so, yeah. For all that you can't do, it's a kind of pandemonium. Yes, it's yeah. amazing how much is the same on some level. It's really weird. It's been so weird. Well, talk about it as an artist who hasn't stayed in one place more than a couple of months, maybe. Suddenly yeah. you're in the same place for seven or eight months. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a, its own journey for sure. Um, so, uh, when it happened in March, I was not okay. Like I was just not okay. I, my body didn't know how to exist <laughs> this way and, and the plans all are being aborted. And I, you know, I've been doing it in a really DIY way and very haphazard all along and just really kind of trying to do it really super independently. And it was just really taking off after a decade and there were all these new things on the horizon that were really kind of the next level and I was so thrilled and excited and it just all came crashing down so um it was really painful and I, I um I really wasn't well for a couple of weeks and and then slowly just yeah it was traumatic it really was traumatic and I know it was for everybody but it, it, my, nothing that made my life, my life was there anymore. And then shelter in one, in your home. Well, I don't have a home, so I don't have a family. I don't have anything. So the road is my life. So it really, it was like my life was, every aspect of my life was gone with, with no return in sight. So, um, the reason, not that I really could have left uh, because I don't drive, but I got stuck in Winnipeg, which is a city I don't know anybody in. Oh. I had intended to finally come and play my two shows here and finally, you know, meet some of the community here. And it, it had been a very long time coming and I finally had shows in Winnipeg and they got cancelled. But then here I was and the train got cancelled. Uh, and I... I, I suppose I could have gotten on a plane, but I just, I was, I was in, I was shocked. Like, I just didn't know what to do. And there was no point in going anywhere, really, because there were no shows in, like, you know, so it was a very surreal thing. And I made this decision based on a very strange internal hunch or something like that that it might actually be better for me to be stranded in a place I don't know at all than go to a place where I'm familiar because it's new the newness of it is would feel like the road still yeah so I would, yeah does that make sense to you Absolutely. And that's a, that's a clever trick to play on yourself, right? On my own brain. Yeah. So, uh, like it would still be a good story. It's a better story. Um, all the things that I was like, what can I hold on to here? That still road experience and what I thrive on. Yeah. And, you know, I'm okay. I don't have friends to see so it's it's, a, it's I'm not tempted to to go run around and like I don't know a soul so yeah <laughs> it's, uh, okay so everyone I meet is new and if I walk down streets it's new and the stores are new and and um yeah it was this sort of weird trick I could play on myself to make it feel like I was still on the road 
Yeah. Um, and, and I think that's kind of, uh, it's almost a necessary survival tactic for many of us. To do anything you can for a sense of continuity. Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. Um, I was staying, uh, you know, I got kind of rescued by a couple that was uh, going to host a house concert and I lived in their basement for a couple of months, which is outrageous, uh, just outrageous, but, uh, and I wasn't well, you know, like, so I basically stayed in the basement and was kind of pacing and crying and, and processing this incredible trauma. Um, and then would kind of come upstairs and have a cup of tea with them. And they were just, they, they really left me uh, the space to, they were, they understood and um, they gave me my basement space, but they were there if I needed to talk or whatever. So it was, um, you know, they gave me, a, they, they lent me a clarinet so that I could try oh, to wow. play, you know, like learn something. I was doing really strange things like really just trying to feed my brain anything. I, I did write songs, um, but I, I, I was just so panic stricken and, and kind of fucked up that like just trying to learn a new instrument or something was, was any distraction uh, that wasn't Facebook, which was obviously the worst place to be hanging out. Absolutely. And yet, and yet the only way to stay connected to, to everyone in my life. So yeah. bizarre beyond words. It's just been weird. I've been in, a, in an actual apartment now since September. I ended up living with a friend of theirs for a few months after that and uh, finally went, all right, well, I guess I have to rent uh, well, yeah. space for a while. And um, since I was since I was living in Montreal 15 years ago and it's, oh, it's been, um, yeah, ups and downs, but uh, an incredible exploration of who the fuck am I when I'm not road girl, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's very strange. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I, I kind of, I found the same thing. My, my life was going about 90 K an hour and then all of a sudden, it's just like a face plant. And yeah. Stop. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I completely relate. I think, the, I think just the sense of time, like how time moves and how we move through it changed radically because of this. Um, some people's lives kind of kept rolling with their employment and things like that, but or family life or what, what have you. But yeah, I think for a lot of us, it was, I mean, I, I can hear thing. I can hear my thoughts in a different pace than I'm used to and yeah. I've made a couple of friends, uh, obviously that has happened. So I've made a couple of friends and I've been joking with them like, you guys, I don't actually know how to have friends in one place. <laughs> like, I don't know how often we're supposed to talk <laughs> or see each other. I, and I'm asking these, I'm asking them these like social protocol questions. <laughs> like I'm some kind of freak alien. How do you guys do this? Like, what's the deal? Do you do you get together once a week? <laughs> like, do I send you a follow up to the story I told you the last time we met? Like, I have lived like this in years. I love that. Oh my goodness, yes. Um, and I think that uh, you probably may or may not agree, but I find that humor is. is even more important humor at your own predicament at everybody else that like you if you're not laughing at least once a day i worry for your mental health well i um the days i laugh are definitely better days but i'm not gonna lie there's there are some bad mental health days in this and part of it is is not the uh oh shit, my music life is gone, which is obviously <laughs> extraordinarily difficult. Uh, but more of it, actually, I think in terms of my actual like distress, um, it is more related to the political situation and um, 
you know, seeing what's happening uh, politically and socially around me, um, partly as a result of the pandemic, partly not, but like the US elections and I would, uh, and seeing, you know, just like really fascist thinking and um, it's, it's so dis so deeply distressing. It's personally very triggering to me with my background. Um, yeah. So I've kind of been in this, I don't know, PTSD kind of mode where I'm just constantly triggered and, and that's causing me more mental health anguish than um, just the, the isolation and the, this, you know, the, the halt on my own way of right. living, but it's all connected. It is. I, I'm going to say that perhaps because you have been a traveler for the last decade, that part of not being grounded in a particular place or a series of people is not an aspect for you. Whereas for me, suddenly all those people I went to class with and went to work with. Right. They're on completely gone. Yeah, on some level, I'm better equipped uh, because of my so many years on the road where there is just it's nothing but troubleshooting and shit going wrong and you just kind of I am a highly adaptable person or I would never have survived the way I was living anyway like I, I take in my new surroundings and reality very quickly usually <laughs> and um, just fit myself in and I'm really good at making the best out of of what I've got you know but um so yeah, I'm, I'm more of the distress is is kind of on a social concern level, uh, which is not. I mean, it, that's the stuff I write about too. It's it's um, it's overwhelming what's going on. It really, it really yeah. is. Yeah. And on some level, which was interesting, more so in the beginning, because I did write songs and I'm still writing songs. Um, but there was like the very very beginning of it where I was like really stranded in this basement and had no idea what was ever like is the whole world ending like are we is this is it I had a real deep existential crisis about like do songs even matter and do they mean anything anymore like the the, the parameters have shifted in such a way where the what does anything mean or matter anymore and it was hard to navigate that imagine I was going through songs of mine and going well, well that sentiment doesn't fucking matter anymore <laughs> it's irrelevant Crazy. everything is irrelevant right and and trying to find my way artistically i mean art is about gleaning meaning and it was really hard to do and playing crappy clarinet was a, a like instrumental music just <laughs> was a I didn't know what to do with with words I've been painting um I, don't know if I mentioned that to you I've it's something I've always wanted to do and never could on the road right um awesome and that's been a really interesting exploration a very healthy uh way to express without the need for words so kind of more appropriate now in some ways um but it's gotten a very nice response on facebook what i've been sharing and uh Good. someone even offered to buy one and i was like well maybe i can like side hustle why not <laughs> might as well have that in my in my <clears throat> toolkit but yeah of it's, course it's, yeah 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 because I think that's what it's about is uh, we can get turned inside out and dumped upside down. And it's whether or not we can pull it together again to have meaning for us. Because like you yeah. say, that was a pretty shocking uh, point in almost all of our lives. We're like, yeah. oh my goodness, what exactly is important? What's important and what... Um... Yeah, definitely. Like what are, what, what do we, what does, what remains when yes. everything else is gone? Like what, you know, when the dust settles, what's there? And, and that's been interesting on every level, personally, like which connections are, are surviving, you know, this or 
which I didn't, I wrote a bunch of songs in the beginning. And then once I got into painting, I really honestly thought like, that's it. I'm not a musician anymore. I'm just switching into this other good. thing. And, and I'm just, there's no point in being a musician anymore. And then I ended up writing something one night in response to something and, and was so deeply relieved that I still had the impulse to write a song and, and share it. And, and yeah, like, okay. Okay. That part of me is not totally dead. I just, it's, it's in hibernation. <laughs> well, and rightfully so, because part of any performance is your immediate feedback of your audience going, oh, I love this song or singing along or like I think of the last time that we saw you and Dan and you guys were, you know, singing through the audience and saying, yeah. hi, Figgy. And I mean, <laughs> that was, I mean, if my whole career never comes back, that's a pretty good last tour to, <laughs> for sure. No kidding. Um, and I mean, part of my devastation was I was set I finally figured out the US visa and I was about to tour with him <sighs> in the States in May. And I mean, it was like the biggest opportunity of my whole fucking life. And um, so that yeah. hurt <laughs> a lot. Absolutely. That hurt a lot. And then like, well, who knows? Maybe we'll get to do it again one day, but maybe we won't. So well, that, well. that was, I think that was the one of the bigger blows in all of this. And um yeah, it's been interesting to, I've done a few live streams. Good. And that's been very interesting, you know, talk about adaptability, like you know, what a different type of performance where you're kind of alone in a room. Yeah. But it is very interactive in a different, a very different way. And the intimacy, I think, I think one of the things that has been kind of beautiful is that everybody is kind of in their pajamas looking frazzled right now, whether they're top celebrity or, or just anybody. So you can be, I'm fairly kind of um, naked in my real performances anyway like I don't I'm not costumed up or or anything but myself anyway but there's something about like you can be a wreck on these live streams and everybody's with you because everybody's feeling it and you can fuck up and you can be messy and you can shuffle pages and and uh it's it's this it's even more intimate on some level even though they're not in the room with you it's it's that's it's quite beautiful oh that's lovely yeah. awesome yeah because I, I do think it's important to continue to feed your your little love organ, right? Like you need to be collecting as well as dispersing, I think, right? We, we need that. I think that uh, doing a couple of them in the beginning and realizing I didn't want to, like I was just fucked up, like everything just, I was angry and upset and devastated and I didn't think I could sing without crying my eyes out anyway. Like I just didn't, I, I was depressed. <laughs> I just wasn't yeah. up for anything. And then I did one and um, people's feedback, you know, there's always the ones who are like, oh, you look sad or you look tired or, oh, you look really good. You look healthy, you look fine or whatever. Like the feedback on how I'm doing according to strangers, which is always kind of funny. <laughs> uh, like this concern for me from people I don't really personally know is always kind of funny. But more interesting to me was people who were saying, thank you so much for giving us an hour away from our own distress uh -huh. and like that I was actually able to help people pass the time um, in this really scary time, I realized like, yeah, this isn't really, I need it too, but it really, I have to remember that this is helping other people and I've seen it on other people's live streams. So the, just the thank yous from, mm -hmm. from everybody. It's also interesting, like I was just, well, fuck, man, everybody's doing live streams now. Like, there's no point in, in, in just being one more person who's doing the same thing as everybody else. Like, I hate that 
kind of like, well, you got to elbow your way through the other thousand musicians who are live streaming. <laughs> and then just realize, well, that's the same as anything in the music industry anyway. And yeah. if, that, if that's a reason to not make art, then you're an idiot. That that's, just doesn't work that way. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I, I have to agree that but it, it really, it's a different medium, but you're still, you're fighting for the few gigs that there are. You're having to really push yourself hard. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a service or um, it's not, it is about me and my need to still feel like a musician, but it's like, well, why am I a musician in the first place? It's not just for me, obviously. I wouldn't sacrifice this many aspects of a normal life if it was just <laughs> for me that I obviously believe in the the medicinal value of music and that I am trying to do something nice for other people or, or give them a absolutely yeah. yeah no kidding and it it that that's an interesting payback because I was really struggling with uh creating a home radio program yeah, no kidding. And then I I got a couple of emails just f from two listeners saying, oh, my goodness, you were on the air the other day. Thank you. It, it felt so good hearing you again. It's like it matters to others. It matters to other people. Um, I have been working on my book. Good. Right. Because if not now, then I'm really an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and one of the chapters is about, you know, just my, my take on what success means and ambition and self promotion and all those tricky issues and how I've approached them and navigated them and how it's evolved over the years. And one of the kind of key points is all my discomfort with the idea of self presentation and self promotion ultimately eventually and it took way too long to reach this idea is that it's not about acquiring numbers of fans to say look how many fans I have it's that if you play a show and there's 20 people there and two people find healing in a song well if you play to 2,000 people there'll be 200 people who find healing in the song and that's a much more important motivator for doing well in the business than it just being like, well, I want cred. And I do, I'm not impervious to, to like, well, those guys seem to be doing well. How come I'm not doing as well? But it, it shifts the, the energy of, of, of it when you realize like, of course you do it because you love it. You love doing Absolutely. radio, but other people love hearing you and they, they their heart feels good when they hear yeah. your voice and you're curating excellent musical taste obviously obviously <laughs> obviously yes so, yeah it's um it's a two-way street it sure. is yeah. yeah one of the other things I've been working on is um which I've technically been working on for a couple of years but it was going real slow because I was touring at the same time is um, I've actually been editing, uh, uh, helping create a documentary about a friend of mine. Amazing. It's amazing because I have zero experience in uh, film editing, but I am a good editor for writing. Right. And, uh, but I don't know how to actually do the technical cutting and pasting of film. So I've sub hired a friend of mine to just follow my notes of where to cut and where to put what. Excellent. And, and it's 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 an incredible project about a friend of mine who has cerebral palsy and he's set out to do this film about how much more challenging it is to find romantic love when you have a physical disability. Oh and my goodness. <laughs> it's it's so talk about a labor of love like he got a little grant for it and and um originally he asked me to just put some music in it and then i was visiting and he was struggling uh, with mental health and and all sorts of things and i i sort of stepped in and said i think i can help you because he had just mountains of footage and no plan and i said i think i might be good at this 
I think ah. I might be good at this and I, I'd like to help you. And uh, it turns out I'm good at it, but it's um, a very different, like I'm good at it conceptually, but I have ADHD and I'm not good at sustained sitting and like the note taking and the organization. And so, I mean, the reason I have paper and pencil is because there's about 7,000 pieces of paper with notes thrown around my <laughs> my living room. Um, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's been interesting just, you know, I guess that's not something I would usually talk about in a music interview, but just um, to put my artistic creative skills into a project that isn't about my art or my life or my work um, is a really refreshing thing, yeah. you yeah. know? And I'm always complaining that I don't really know how to do social activism in the way I live. I don't know how to contribute beyond being a musician, but that just seems so arrogant to say like, well, you know, writing protest songs. So that's, it's bullshit. It's not really helping <laughs> <laughs> so I would have to disagree on that point. Well, you know, because no you it might feel like it or frivolous or something to you, but each one of the components go to making it up. And if you want people to be fired up and stick together and create a difference, a rallying song is really a good way to start I guess it. we need, yeah. we need soundtracks for our revolutions, I suppose. And it's it's a very capitalist thing to, to me to sort of denigrate the value of art when really I'm, it is the thing, right? I, for, I'm definitely not denigrating the value of art. I just see a time where there's protests and really intense activism and I don't participate on that level and I wonder you know if what I'm doing is enough usually and I I feel um a little bit better about myself um doing this documentary that it could, I guess because even if I believe in the magic of songs and how how they're socially important it's hard to say that about your own yeah. work so yeah this is I, my work too but yeah, yeah. You're helping somebody else get their work out there. Yeah, exactly. Really? Yeah, their vision. So yeah, no, that's been a nice thing to discover. Good, awesome. And yeah, I can imagine that um, that all of those kinds of uh, side ventures help you think of the next little bit of training that you can put your brain through if it comes to another year or, you know, like heaven forbid, but no, we, but it, we it, better be prepared. Mean, I'm building new skills and learning new. I, one of the first things I did when uh, in March was I had downloaded this uh, really basic video editing software when I was on tour with Dan because I'd taken this long video of us on the train and I knew I needed to trim it down. And so I downloaded that. And then I, I um, you know, I have a new album and I can't fucking do anything <laughs> with it. <sighs> Uh, and it's my 10th album and it should be like the best celebrated whatever. And I, and I thought, well, I can't even make music videos. I can't do anything. And I figured out a way to just do a really basic, really basic, but charming animation. Oh, good. And so I thought, well, like I'm learning skills which will benefit me later. But also um, I think that's really my mental survival, I think, really depends on on just I'm, I like learning new. I like new. Newness yeah. is vital to me. I, I I get stale very quickly and need to flit from you know between things and and the touring. The touring gave me that because I was absolutely all the time. <laughs> and so um, yeah, like just discovering new things that I can learn and teach myself. And what what can I do if I'm in isolation and and alone with with not money to buy you know expensive gear or anything like? And, I, and I'm not, not no desire to actually acquire stuff because I'm I don't care how I'm gonna live out of a suitcase again eventually. So yeah. absolutely, I have faith in you. Thank you. I, and, and I have to say, 
it was just heartwarming beyond words to get a text from you asking me how the uh, the bird was doing without her wings like that just showed so much compassion and understanding and just being you know that someone was thinking about me and and getting that I might be experiencing this crisis a little bit uniquely that meant a lot yeah. to me I really thank oh, you good oh hey you're welcome I mean it's uh We've we've managed to create a friendship, and I really like that. Me and plus, too. you've just like uh, editing a documentary on a, a, a friend of yours with CP. I have a niece with CP, and, and of course, reaching the age when you you have to realize people with cerebral palsy are fully fledged people. They need fully fledged lives. Yes. Okay. So you will love and share this documentary when it's absolutely. Out. I'm oh. looking forward to it. Oh, great. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Yeah, it does. It hits a lot of people, and it really wasn't an issue that was as sharply on my radar until I befriended this friend and thought, yeah, you know what? I've never really thought about it that much. Thank yeah. you for opening my eyes to it. You know. Yeah. Obviously, I'm nice and respectful to people I meet no matter what and that's how we you know we became friends because I don't you know it wasn't a barrier to having a friendship with this person but until I really heard his story and his struggles I I hadn't really thought about it I have so many burning social issues firing through my brain uh, on racism and sexism and, and the, my my usual stuff that yeah you know, that nice yeah well, and that, uh, you know, of all the things like the, the life comes screeching to a halt and the different pace, it actually has allowed you that time where perhaps you might not have had the opportunity to. Uh, yeah, I was struggling to do that editing work as I was touring. Oh, uh, and I was trying like, I, you know, every time I had a few days off, I would try to get to it. But much like writing my book. I was always able to do little snippets of focused work, but there's a point in big projects like that where you need quiet and you need isolation and space and time to, to really, you know, pull it all together. And uh, like I said, I'd be a complete idiot if I wasn't using this crisis to <laughs> at least finish those two projects. Yeah. Yeah. The, book, the book is a doozy. I didn't want to work on it at first because like I didn't want to write about the road while I was reeling from I didn't yeah. I couldn't handle it. But the fact that I was able to kind of get back into it is is also a good sign that I'm I'm doing better than I was at the beginning. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. yeah thank you. Well, when you reached out at first, you're like, you, you know, can you do an interview telling people how you're uh, you know, what you're survival strategies are and I'm like dude I'm not surviving at all right now I don't know what to tell you everything is shit and I'm really depressed <laughs> so no I'm, I am um, we waited for a, a, a more articulate time but I think also like you know it's good for people to know everything was shit for a little bit that for every one of us it well just... I'm worried now um because I think the heaviness is is upon us now, mm -hmm. um, because it, it did get so out of control. Now I we really are going to see a whole bunch of deaths that shouldn't be happening, and in the middle of a dark winter, yeah, when we're all tired and and worn out from the stress of it. I'm I've already answered for not to get too heavy, but I've responded to four uh, kind of suicide alerts from friends and, and talking them down. And this is not an easy time. This no. is not an easy time. So you really have to be vigilant and checking in on each other now because it's this is not, everyone's kind of at their lowest threshold and personal resources. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us. I love chatting with you. I know we always have great conversations. I got it. I just want to tell the listeners because they'll be listening later that yes. uh, you and I have been texting and you sent me a text and said, Figgy, save something for the interview. <laughs> it's true. And we ended Although up. Although I should it. know it's not like we ever <laughs> run out of anything to talk about. So, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 
Okay, my dear, uh, do you have any kind of words of wisdom or little uh, snippets or euphorisms or anything that you want to get out there? Um, the, yes, <laughs> I do. Um, please be critical thinkers in your readership of all the information that's being blasted at you these days and critical thinking is not the same as showing disobedience to authority that's not a blanket thing you know sometimes the rules are good rules <laughs> and the guideline like just saying fuck you rules doesn't make you cool it makes you an idiot in certain cases <laughs> please the protocols are questionable but if it's questionable err on the side of Caution and concern for each other. People are dying that shouldn't be dying. Don't be racist. <laughs> Honest to God, people, the world is going in a very scary direction and you have an enormous amount of power within yourself to just wake up and not in the woke way, but just be fucking nice to other people. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. Be caring and concerned for other people. I don't know if you have swears on your show or if you have to bleep me out. Hey. Uh, I'm literally begging people to just be kind right now and trust that you have the resources to get through this very difficult period because you do. People have survived crazy hardships all throughout history and we have it. We can do this. We can do this. Beautiful. Thanks.